Survival City Builders are among some of the best games we play here on the channel, and Thrive Heavy Lies the Crown is no exception. Well, hello again there, friends and fans. Raptor here, and after many hours of playing this game, I'm ready for some more as we take another look at an updated demo now available on Steam for all of you with the link down below in the description. This game is an up-and-coming city builder, kingdom builder, castle builder, whatever you want to call it. It is certainly a game that is very similar to Frostpunk in a few ways where we're choosing between like, for example, in that game, faith and order, but here in a much different light. Money and manipulation and power and intimidation or kindness can all change how your kingdom grows. You can be a benevolent leader and be kind and caring of your people or just be merciless and torturous to everyone who tries to get in your way or who is just trying to do good. This game also, again, playable with multiplayer allows you to basically take control of a world map and kind of fight against your friends for territory and control. And there's not too many city builders I can think of that allow you to do it in this kind of scale. Well, welcome back, good to see you all here. This video today again is sponsored by the developers of Thrive Heavy Lies the Crown. So thanks to them for sending over previous keys and of course now sponsoring today's video where of course we'll take a look at the full game upon its release. So check down below in the description, get it today. Steam's next event is a fantastic event in order to try all sorts of different games, and this is certainly one of them. There's Nisamore, the kingdom, uh, or an area within a former kingdom, I'm not exactly sure, a, a new land, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is an area free from the blight, which we'll show you in just a minute, uh, as this kingdom is constantly under attack from this type of uh, weird curse or something that's poisoning the water, killing the land and animals, and is driving people insane. So anyway, I believe the way it'll work in multiplayer is, of course, you can pick any of these uh, starting locations, and your friends can too, and then within that, there's like little um, areas around it, outposts and whatnot, that'll allow us to stretch our influence, that kind of thing. So anyway, we have to worry about attractiveness and hydration, apples, flax, hemp, and herbs all grow here. So let's watch the intro, and let's get started. Hey, thanks again, by the way, for subscribing to the channel and turning on that notification bell. Thank you very much for all your comments and questions and thoughts. I love reading them all and answering them all down below. So be sure to leave a comment. Let me know what you think of the game or uh, what you think about uh, other types of city builders like this one. What comes to mind when you see this game and or if you played it and or playing it now, come on back to the video and let me know what you think. All right, let's jump in. Thanks again for watching. Let's go. No one plans for ruin. I did not ask for this ever-thickening fog for the illness and decay that it brings. It was no threat at first, just a, a light haze over fresh morning dew, bringing greater sheen to ripe berries and a, a bountiful fullness to grazing beasts. How subtly that sheen dulls and the, the bounty dries up. As it begins to creep in, to seep in, and whispers turn to whimpers. Food spoiled, livestock dead, water poisoned. Some call it a cleansing. Most call it the Wargrim. I call it my destiny. My rule seemed bound to failure. But for failure, I'd never planned. But you, what destiny awaits the one who walks amongst the Walgrim without fear? It has always been you. So here, take this gift, the mantle it bestows. Pray that you might bear its weight a little better than I. But. Never forget, no one plans for ruin. When the Walgrim calls, how will you answer? It's time for our first decision. Remember, I mentioned that we can either be kind or we can be cruel, and I think I'm going to try to go for the kind run this time, focusing more on our people's needs. But also, through hard work comes great rewards, like, for example, 
via commerce and trade. We'll try to go down that route, but it's anybody's guess as to what those three mean at the bottom. Two months since the fall of Aldemore, since you gathered up the survivors and set forth towards a new home. Nisamore is the future, a land free from the terrors of the past. Here you will raise up a new kingdom, guided by the loyal advisors who form your curia. Your advisors are quite knowledgeable, but none can deny their own self-interest. Each has a plan for your reign. In the end, you alone must set the tone of your rule. Where do your interests lie? Well, where there's wisdom is uh, where wisdom is grown, little fear remains. We rise with vigilance, scarred but unbroken. Prosperity's pursuit ensures a bountiful future. I think we're going to go with that one because, of course, the more we prosper, the more everyone will succeed. Wow. We're already here. Hey, look, a little wagon. Oh, horses, too. Would you like to play the tutorial? Sure, why not? All right. Well done, Your Majesty. Now that we found our new home, let's move the caravan to a location you wish to build the keep. Right, so uh, a little bit of a defensive structure to begin with. Once you've found the perfect spot, press the highlighted button to deploy the caravan. So that is uh, right there. All right, let's go ahead and look around where we want to deploy. Middle's not always necessarily best, but um, it's probably somewhere nearby that we want to go. I'm going to just plop it over here just to be a little different. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I wanted to uh, click deploy and then click over here, but that's totally fine. We'll build it right there. Okay, the caravan is then deploying, I guess. It can be converted to a trader's hut or a keep. Uh, select your caravan in the information pane and select the keep button and place it where you desire. Oh, I see. So we can deploy the wagon, then we can build the keep somewhere else. All right, well, let's build the keep up here then. Within that green circle. Oh, and everyone's deploying. And there we go. All right, so yeah, we can move the wagon anywhere and then deploy the keep. I guess middle is okay, but as you can see now, this is all the areas around us. So some of these other locations friends could uh, have started in, and then eventually we can take over these little smaller outposts and build more than just one city. The city builder is a kingdom builder in the sense that once you've started your main city, you can also kind of settle other areas and territory and interact with the world map a little bit more than a traditional city builder for sure. All right, they want us to uh, build a primitive stockpile and start uh, doing some things for the farmers. All right, well, that's going to be the primitive stockpile where, the, of course, they can gather uh, wood and stone. So let's plop that down maybe over here. And you know what? Actually, before we do that, let me see if I can build some roads, brother. We're going to double down on dirt roads just to make it look fancy. There's no, I don't think there's any sort of real reason to do this other than making it look fancy. It looks like it's an insta-build as well. So let's go ahead and do something like this. I'm going to try to just do some fancy here. Make it look all nice and fancy. There we go. Cool. Put some houses or something along that. I don't know. And maybe leave this square for a fountain or a statue. Whatever may come our way. Go ahead and build some storage structures up here then. And I don't want to try to be as uh, symmetrical as I usually am. I'm going to try to kind of get out of my comfort zone a little bit and try to do maybe a mix of both. That'll be a good compromise. Okay, so that's... Uh, going to be for our stockpile of, I think, wood and stone. And uh, there's some stone over there. But we'll start with wood over here. You can always build more than one. Let's plop that down. There they go. All right, workers will get to work on that right away as they did here at the uh, keep, which looks really nice too. Obviously, they want some homes so we can build some farmer houses, but not until we have log and rough stone. And speaking of which, we have all of our materials here of uh, logs and rough stone, apples, hemp, water, we have firewood, uh, hemp clothing, and cider too. And I think these might all be for the uh, initial farmers. I think as we get a little further into the game, more diverse groups of people will require more diverse groups of items, that kind of thing. Well, it looks like people are already delivering wood and stone to our stockpile. And there we go. Area of influence, right? Our AOI. That's where we can basically build stuff within that in order to then store it there. Gathering resources, build a logger camp and a quarry camp. All right, let's go ahead and get started with that then. Over to labor structures, armor structures. Ah, okay, so it's a farmer structure, I believe. Oh, wood chopper too. Chop, chop. Yeah, there's our labor structures, our farmer structures, and our logistics. Oh, we can also, uh, yeah, choose to chop things down here. Oh, it's not necessarily that, it's the camps there under that menu. 
Looks like we also have the ability to mine minerals here. Gather yeah, apples, flax, hemp, wheat, herbs, probably a few other things too. All right, let's start with the chop chop. Let's go ahead and start with the little logging camp there. Cool. And then those people should start cutting down trees and gathering those supplies in that area there. I see a few stone here. Uh, and we, I think we got to keep this green bar within that building to our right in order to store stuff there. So I'm going to try to build it um, maybe down this way. There we go. And we could, of course, adjust the areas of influence as well. We can increase that. And I think... There we go. Now we have 43. Perfect. Now we're going to start working on food stores. So we want basic food and water. And we want to be able to store that somewhere as well. Via the uh, food stores building for the farmers. A.K.A. like a granary. Let's go ahead and plop down a road going over here. Looks like we can also build bridges too. So that's going to be good if there's ever a river or a lake in order to uh, get resources from another section of our map. Oh, plop down a little road there. And let's also increase the range of this too. This is good, by the way, for controlling where people cut down trees or do mining. So that way if you're trying to keep a beautiful grove of trees or if you're trying to limit uh, deforestation or something, for whatever reason you can do it that way. Okay, now we must construct a food market, so let's do that. So there's our food stores. I think we'll store that maybe over... Uh, and maybe we'll do that up, up here, down here. Let's do it down here. Let's build that right on this side. There we go. Okay, so once that's constructed, we'll move on to the next thing. we got to assign some people here. If we want to. Oh, and we have the Walgrim presence here, too. So this essentially is like a threat level. And when that fills up fully, that uh, Walgrim uh, that's out there, that weird mist, will eventually give us a buff or a debuff. It's kind of a random chance to whether or not those things happen. So uh, we'll see here shortly. We have ourselves edicts, too. So for now, we can activate festivals and food uh, delivery. Trade routes, too. Mm, diplomacy. And would you look at that? A tome of knowledge, expertise, and mastery for different types of research. And it looks like just a few uh, tiers there, too. Oh, I like the... I just noticed the uh, little flashlight, too, for looking around and shining at things at nighttime. Nice. Assertive without being pushy. The lighting, that is. All right, well, we're waiting for those people to also build that building. I'm at least going to build them some homes. I think they've earned them. Sure. And I wonder if we can move this eventually. Pack the caravan for travel. Oh, there you go. So once we plop down our keep, this can move wherever we want. I think essentially this might also work like a uh, resource depot, so we might be able to store extra stuff here. I'm not entirely sure. It says storage, no resources loaded, so... This could be how we settle other lands by eventually taking this caravan and filling it full of goods to then uh, go settle new, strange new worlds. Put that up there then. Alright, I think we'll start with six homes. Alright, we just finished building our little market. It's actually a storage area and a market, too, so we can actually spe uh, spe uh, specify what we can put in there. And then, of course, the specialty of the worker working there, like the um, maybe salesperson or whatever, will be uh, something we can pick from the menu. All right, building roads. We're already way ahead of you on that one, sir. And there's our uh, specialists, people who are employed at the food store building. Another beautiful morning. Gorgeous sunrise. Look at the the uh, land, too. There's kind of like, um, looks maybe a little muddy, like it just rained or something like that. Pretty damn good work with the uh, flowers and the leaves, dandelions, small poppies, and 
little mist and rocks and things can all be seen. Looks good. All right, let's assign somebody to work here if we can. Not at the moment. Uh oh, are those bear paws? Why? Why are there bear paws? Don't tell me that. I don't want no bears here. There we go. All right. Oh, looks like we got a ton of people employed at the uh, logger camp. And lots of people mining stone, too. I guess we'll have to cut back on some of the employment here. We'll cut it down to two at each building. All right. So now for the food market, I think we can only build in the green area or that's where it'll supply. So if we build an additional neighborhood, we'll build it to the west. And we'll cut down more of those trees too, to which we could build a, another um, primitive stockpile and then build ourselves another logger camp. That'll be a good way to clear the land and then get materials for what we want to build there, which of course will be homes. Love these A-frame style homes too. All right, we got wood choppers there. That might be a good idea. And a well, too. Oh. We did want to build on the western side, so let's try to build that near the marketplace. There we go. And more people coming over to build their homes, rightfully so. Wow, day two, and we've already built all this stuff. Wow. Rome wasn't built in a day, but Raptoria was built in two days, I guess. More construction noises. Wow. And things seem to be working up here all right. Farmer house was constructed. How many people can live at each house? Let's take a look. Looks like uh, two. And maybe it can be upgraded. Advanced needs to be met uh, to ho house more residents. Okay. So more homes need to be built. Oh, yeah, we got people working at the primitive stockpile, too. Can we assign anybody to builders? Let's see. There we go. We have five out of five builders. And we got only four unemployed. That seems like a little bit, but it's really nothing. Especially when we have more... Um, wood and stuff that we want to gather. Building yet another home. Oh, look at that. You can see everything being put on. Oh, wow. There's even scaffolding and whatnot. That's cool. We have military structures, too. We've got the caravan. We've got the barracks. we got large walls, different types of fences, too. That's pretty cool. All right, we're building a well. We should also build a wood cutter. There we go. All right, the wood cutter will allow us to. Uh, make firewood for the winter I believe you know I'm wondering this might not be driven by time this might actually be driven by our actions too 
Build a road between your food market and primitive stockpile, they say. Well, haven't we done that? Pretty sure we're connected. Try that. Unless a food market is a different building. Food stores. Hmm. Oh, yes. We need to have not only a uh, road between them, but there also needs to be within the same area of influence, right? Fresh water. Okay, now we're going to build a well as well. Cool. Now we're getting all caught up with all sorts of different things. And still a few homeless. Let's give them some houses. They've earned it. There we go. Perfect. Oh, I like the nighttime transition. Everything looks really nice. Different types of fog and uh, different types of like uh, cloud cover. Different light shaft, uh, shafts coming through. Looks real nice. Ooh, happiness is at 75%. A few more homes being constructed too. Wow. All right, the well's going down. That'll give us some extra water. I think that actually gets uh, stored at the food stores as well. So at least we'll have water. I don't know about our first food source, though. Let's see what our people sell. Oh, yeah, maybe some apples. Let's build that next. There we go. We'll do a big old apple farm there. Now, ideally, we want to cut all those trees down before we put down the farm field like that, but gotta wait a little bit. That's right. There's all our resources at the moment. And now they want us to construct houses. Well, good thing they started us with food because food's a little more complicated. You know, like, you have to find it, hunt it, Bring it back, cook it, distribute it, like the world's biggest game of bop it. Yeah, okay, another house going up. How many people do we have in our city anyway? I feel like it's about maybe 30 to 50. Good times, bruh. All right, more houses going down. Let's speed up time a little bit. So far, so good. We need somebody working at the well. No, they're working. Ah, another beautiful sunrise. Gorgeous. All right, act one, events start settling in. Perfect. The tutorial is done done-ish. So let's go ahead and start making some of our first decisions as king, as ruler. Introduction, settling in. The foundations of your settlement have been laid, but uh, much must be done to encourage growth. A young Curia, a small group of advisors, will help you find your way. Uh, Chancellor Bodie Declan and Duke Donovan Stanton are those who remain uh, from the f king's fallen Curia. 
Uh, Sir Osian Hayward, a trusted knight and friend, has always been uh, has been added to the round off added to round off the group. You must determine where to best focus your efforts in this fledgling kingdom. Oh, we got Will Riker. All right. So you can uh, kind of tell by talking to these people what their angle is, what their agenda is. So just listen up and you'll kind of get a feel for what everybody's going to be trying to push whenever opportunity or hardship arises. Conversation. Uh, Chancellor Bodhi Declan. The solution is easily found, Your Majesty. Without our people, we wouldn't have come this far. Their resilience should be rewarded, instilling confidence and joy. Uh, Sir Ossian. It is true, Chancellor, that we've overcome much. Tragedies of the past are but a few steps behind us. This is why we should focus on securing and protecting what we've started here. Only with a strong defense can we find the courage to rise once more. Hmm, both are reasonable positions, gentlemen. Duke Donovan Stanton. Yes, Your Highness. Reasonable to be certain, yet both overlooking that uh, which in most uh, reliably maintains and grows a kingdom in its F uh, its coffers without a sufficient coin we would be difficult to grow beyond a simple thatch and stone we must inspire the people hmm. fair points all our citizen security and wealth all important to the, our foundations uh, let's see Safety first above all else. Our sovereign, we're still unfamiliar with this land. As such, we must remain on guard and procure the means to defend and fortify our fledgling kingdom. It was not long ago since uh, we were side by side, took up arms in defense of our beloved land and king. I'll never question your desire to protect Hayward, but we must first secure the settlement's wealth. As that is the key to our progress. So I agree with that guy here. Uh, you're both mistaken. If I may, your highness, uh, Wayward's request may create tensions with the locals and the dukes. We will now... Uh, well, now isn't the time to be contemplating coin. We must establish a sense of community first. All right, fine. I'd like to hear from the duke. Your grace, our citizens are indebted to us. To rebuild what was lost, our people should devote their lives and wealth to the cause. Their investment will ensure a prosperous future for all. Duke, surely you cannot expect the survivors to give up the very little that they have left. It's an investment, Declan. <laughs> you act as if, you're, uh, if you will not benefit. And where do you stand, Chancellor? Your Highness, without the procurement of life's necessities, we cannot flourish. Let us focus on our attention to food and shelter and other essentials. And we'll have the strength to grow our kingdom. Strength can only be nurtured through creating a proper defense, Your Highness. The Chancellor means well, but given the fear of the people uh, that they still hold, we must let them feel secure. Food is security, Hayward, as is shelter. I agree with the Chancellor. Food and shelter it is. Uh, and so based on that, that's kind of how we get uh, different types of items. This time it's 250 apples. Perfect. Grateful for your support. Informs you that the farmers have brought enough supplies to support early food needs of the settlement. Let's explore housing interface. Left click on the farmer's houses in the information tab. Information on happiness, health, revolts, fire attacks, etc. Okay. A farmer's house can hold a maximum of four residents. And it works a little bit like it does in the Pharaoh series or Anno, where, of course, we can decorate and whatnot around the houses, and it'll give them higher desirability, and then eventually we can upgrade them to have more people living there. We have to worry about fire, attack, and disease. 
Makes sense. Happiness level. Happiness for this game, some things have been streamlined for the demo because they're not yet fully uh, fleshed out and or I'm assuming they're probably uh, working on the finishing touches and want to leave them out until ready. Don't worry, be happy. Got it. Oh, we built the farm field too? Alright, what do we got people working on? Ah, nobody unemployed. But he's working hard on stuff. Hmm. I'll we'll have to wait a little bit. Happiness drops to 20 or below, there will be a riot. We'll have to worry about that. Managing jobs and the information pane. Way ahead of you, game. Way ahead of you. Wow, we still need more houses? I just built a bunch. They need more? Wait a minute. These are off by a little bit. How do we demolish a building? Much better. And there we go. Well, it looks nice. Almost done. They would tell me the wood chopper has no one working on that. Own providences can also be cycled through uh, to observe and adjust the priorities of each class that inhabits. Ah, oh, yeah, so it's like an anno when you get different islands, like one that's just kind of more heavily into mining or something. Almost like a worker's island. All right, warming heartstrings. Way ahead of you, brah. Way ahead of you. Look around a little bit, take a little gander. All right, looking good. So now we need civilians to catch, uh, or rather gather, 30 firewood. Now some basic production for us. Okay, so we want this building here. All right, chop, chop. We'll put it next to the market. All right, now we got to make 30 firewood. Only eight builders we can assign to that. To the whole city. There may be ways around that by building a, uh, or more than one, a building site. An area for them to store their tools and get a briefing for the day. Still one person homeless? Jeez. Okay. Ah, beautiful morning. Gorgeous. Shines the sun. That's what they should name the sequel. Sounds good, I think. Oh, 
Oh, look at all those muddy roads, too. They all kind of look like they're wet, muddy for days. We're going to need horseshoe upgrades or something. And we're getting very close to being uh, full of this presence at 72%. Okay. Oh, we have no one farming yet. And we barely have enough open people as it is. All right, primitive stockpile, you're down to one. Alright, two more houses I want them to build. Be able to build there too. Okay, I'm just listening to the beautiful sounds of nature. I'm hearing a lot of water flowing, but that must be from the uh Yeah, the the well. very peaceful. Let's look at our keep. That leads to research. Okay. Another house going up. Let's play two times. Speed things up a little bit. Okay. Oh, we're good on water. We're good on food for a while. Everything can be sold here and then upgraded for money. Now oh, we need somebody working in the fireworks shop. Firewood shop. I can't add another uh, logging guy. All right, times two speed again. Everybody's moving and shaking. Everybody's getting a hand in. Helmet's not a chair. It's good to see. Houses look a little samey-samey, but when we get upgrades, they'll look a little bit better. Last couple houses going in on the left. And another one shortly. You know, I think when we complete quest, that's when that mist is getting the most angry. Like a, a pink mist. Really? What's this? Well, we got plenty of water and plenty of fruit there. Oh good, happy this went up again. We have a full group working at that building. And lots of vittles too, lots of goodies. Mm-hmm. Full bellies! Yeah, I build the uh Apple Orchard, way ahead of you, pal. Man, we're going to need a lot of people to work there. That's going to take a ton of work for us. Hmm. Ah, they can keep mining. Okay. Oh, people are joining our colony. Oh, I see. That's why we have a constant homeless problem. Uh, 
Okay. Well, let's see what we got. Wow. That's a big old road. I don't see anybody driving down that road. I'll have to see what happens. Looks like they found a, some big old materials there. Oh boy. Heat wave again. Growing the workforce. Now they're telling us we can finally get more advanced homes, I believe. Uh, let's see. Reach a population of 40 farmers. Okay, we can do that. not have them unlocked either at the moment. I think I wanted to try to put a fence around there, but not a decorative one. Okay. Oh, there's the apple orchard. Oh, so now we just got to play the waiting game while we wait for more people to move in. I suppose we'll kind of build some more houses. This might be the other warning is because there's wild game nearby. People might be a little hesitant to uh, answer the, uh, the card. The paging Dr. Batman. PhD. And the buildings look nice. All those A-frames and variation and how the structures in the square. Very nice. Okay, we're still 28 out of 40, but the more happy we keep everybody, the better we'll be, I think. For our current style. Alright, there we go. And see if I can get any information on trees, like a uh, type of tree or wood that it might produce, but, or maybe the stone will give that to us. No, unfortunately. What, what if we hover our mouse? No. I wanted to see how much may have been there. It looks like after you plop it down, then you get to kind of use a geological survey boost from the actual uh, mining landing craft, but one thing seeing it, I suppose. <laughs> landing craft. You know what I mean. Aliens. Ooh, we're 29 out of 40. So I'm assuming what's happening here is that, you know, speaking of landing craft and whatnot, I, I think maybe ships might be landing on the shore and people are making their way to us. Babies could also be born, I think, although it says so-and-so joined the colony. I'm not sure if there is, um, you know, I, 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 totally possible for children to be a part of our settlement. Then when they grow up, then they can become... Uh, you know, students and go to school and then eventually go on to, uh, of course, being an adult themselves and starting their own family. So a lot of these games might uh, formulate their age a little bit faster because nobody really wants to play for like nine in-game months no matter how good the game is. You know what I mean? Yeah, we're only at 30 out of 40. We, even if we go top speed, I feel like we're just at the mercy of the game at the moment. Happiness is at 83%. I don't know if there's much more we could do for that happiness. I, I really don't. Of course, a, if a tumble 
weed wants to blow in right now and give me a bunch of materials. That'd be nice. That'd be nice. No storage building nearby. Oh, where? Well, it doesn't show who. Hmm. Oh, another beautiful sunrise. Now, uh, our kingdom, like the area w we can command, uh, will get a little bigger, too. So this isn't like we're just restricted to this small square and that's it. Another story event. Another another choice to make. Introduction sown. The soil here is rich on the surface, but the farmers doubt its uh, stability mere feet below, which could inhabit the growth of rich, re uh, reliable produce. Chancellor Deccan comes to discuss uh, these concerns with you. My man, William T. Riker, back again. What's up, bro? Not doing the lean, but I'll accept it. All right, your majesty, the farmers are weary. They fear the soil in the new land is not keen for growth. Uh, Chancellor Declan, as we traveled into Nisimor, how many fields uh, were lush in abundance? Such flora can't arise from spoiled earth. Still, the farmers are struggling. Uh, it is possible that uh, the locals have the knowledge or skills unknown to us. Oh, right. They might know how to kill some things a, better, a little better than us. Gotta go get them. Abduct them in our little alien spaceship. <laughs> how different things can truly be here, but I'm no farmer and growing crops is essential to our survival. Uh, we may be able to study the land through uh, that could take a bit or we could find a local with greater understanding. Yes. Perhaps it's wise to secure a farmer who knows these lands. Do you think it's possible? Oh, and not only that, but of course they'll move in and they might bring their families, so that'll help our population goal too. I believe it entirely uh, possible, Highness, with the right scout and offer. Their knowledge will prove invaluable to us. I have no doubt we could be gained... Uh, what could be gained outweighs any potential risks. It's a risk, but to be certain. Uh, but I have your trust. I But I trust your judgment, Chancellor. Oh, purple thing's about full. I was looking at that. Uh, yeah, so willingness to learn. That's what I'm going to go for. A scout will be sent to retain a local seasoned farmer. They and theirs will be offered a home and land amongst your settlement in trade for their knowledge and skill. Another goal knocked out. Wow. Let's see. What's up next? I guess more waiting as we just try to reach 40. And, um... Yeah, it looks like there's a few open vacancies here. Hmm. Uh-oh. Walgrim Surge. Food spoilage. Your food supply has been affected. Minus 30%. We're down to 204 now. Uh-oh. Uh, that could also be a positive thing. A uh, positive event will hit. Oh, and there goes the uh, that purple stuff. The Wygram. Very neat. Oh, wait a minute. Look. Crystals have appeared now. Very interesting. Mm, what could that mean? What is exactly in those crystals and why is it why do we why do we care what could it be military structures i think we're okay for now
Boy, do we have a cute little tidy village. We've already built homes. We've already got our market up. We've already got logging and mining and, well, kind of a sustainable food source for now. At least certainly renewable. I don't know if we're up to sustainable, but every year they'll, of course, contribute to our coffers of food. That's a good thing. A 234 we have now for apples. Hmm. I have to sing everybody a potato song. That'll get that'll get them groovy. Get those babies making. Let's go. Oh yeah, wheat and herbs. Any flax? There is flax. Yeah. Ooh, lots of money came in. Put down a little logging camp there. Give it a little extendo range. I'm cutting down trees, that's cool. Hmm. No storage building nearby. Let's build another one of these. Ah, yes, the, uh, no, the first building. Primitive Stockholm. Syndrome? No. This is the, uh, <laughs> the primitive uh, stockpile. Yeah. I want these to overlap just slightly. Can't remember if this comes with a road out front or not. Uh, loom with a view. Now they want us to start growing hemp. Oh, that was fast. I, I didn't think we were gonna, we were ever going to get to that population limit, but here we are. Construct a hemp farm and uh, harvest 50 hemp. So now we're going to start on the clothing production chain. So growing and harvesting hemp and then creating like a uh, tailor or something like that to then make it into usable clothing for our folks in the town. Not bad. All right, let's connect it that way. So what were we up to? Oh, there's a lumber yard, too. Turns logs into planks. That might be needed. Hmm. I guess we'll just build it down here for now. There we go. So, of course, with all these jobs, it, they're going to require lots of hands to get the labor done. So, we're going to need a lot more people. A, a lot more people. All right. So, we just grow that, and then we start our drug empire then, I guess. Mm-hmm. I'd say so. These guys, oh, they're building the well now? Fine. Oh, no, they're, they're operating the well. Looks like they were digging. Can you dig it? Yes, I can. Yes. Yes, I can. Aren't they? Whenever it comes to a city builder, there's so many layers and so much to do that even within a few hours, we only scratch the surface. Well, that's all the time we have today for Thrive Heavy Lies the Crown. We have yet to get into some more choices that will affect the buildings that we get to build and whatnot. But don't worry. We've live streamed this game earlier on the channel, and there'll be more streams, too, for you all to take a look at. So if you've enjoyed this one, again, download the game for yourself at the link down below in the description, plus and or the Steam demo, but also...
also check the channel too for some tips and uh, things to uh, do and get a feel for the game before you tackle it yourself. My well, thanks again, everybody, for watching, and I will see you all next time. Thanks again. We'll see you soon. Bye.